coastline, 400 miles of rocky coves, windswept headlands, rolling sand dunes and rugged granite cliffs, all engaged in a perpetual battle with Atlantic brawls. Oh, sweet On a headland on Cornwall's north coast stands Tintagel Castle, a site that has become inextricably linked to a legendary figure who continues to dominate England's mythical past. Visitors to these striking ruins are invited to leave the mainland behind by crossing a footbridge, peering over into the natural chasm below, before entering a medieval world of myth and magic. This is a castle that really owes its existence to a myth. Tintagel was named in Geoffrey of Monmouth's History of the Kings of Britain, written in the middle of the 12th century, as the place where King Arthur was conceived. And this came about through a mixture of sorcery and through clever words. And it inspired Richard, the Earl of Cornwall, to build a castle here in the early part of the 13th century. King Arthur would have been something of a role model to those growing up in royal and noble households in the 13th century. In building a castle here at Tintagel, Richard was clearly expressing his commitment to the chivalric ideals of the time that could be seen as embodied by King Arthur. The castle itself was used for a number of purposes, including a prison, uh, but it was often in ruins and then shored up again and then in ruins. And by the early 17th century, it would appear as if the land bridge connecting the two parts of the castle had been eroded away and anybody who wanted to gain access to the castle had to climb down and back up the precipitous cliffs. These ruins, with their mythical origins, might seem ancient to us. But if we look deeper, back into the past we discover clues about this site that relate to lives lived here many centuries before this castle was built. Long before the castle of Earl Richard, Tintagel was occupied. There really isn't much evidence for prehistoric or Roman occupation, but the fact that there isn't evidence does not necessarily mean that people weren't here at that time. But during the early medieval period, say the 5th to the 7th centuries, or the Dark Ages, we know that Tintagel was occupied. Far from being a Dark Age, one writer has suggested that this period is really a Cornish Golden Age. The evidence suggests that the people living in and trading from Tintagel were extremely well connected and were enjoying some of the finest things in life, such as olive oil, wine, and high-status tablewares. And we need to bear in mind that this trade might also have meant that they would have met people from these far-off places. So this idea of diverse languages and diverse traditions mixing at this place. This was a place that was characterized by imports, exchange, and international connections. In gentle complement to the grandeur of Tintagel Castle is an iconic slice of Cornish history, often thought of as a Cornish anthem, Sweet Nightingale. It's sung for us by the wonderful Lisa Knapp. Affirming Cornwall's international stature, this song isn't actually local at all. It's a German import brought back to the southwest of England by Cornish miners who must have heard this beautiful tale whilst working in German tin mines in the 1800s. And neither is the nightingale local. They are migrant birds flying to Africa each year, and ironically, have never actually made it as far west as Cornwall. But then again, there was probably no King Arthur there either. Don't 
Can't you hear the sweet song of the beautiful nightingale flow? Betsy, don't fail. I will carry your pearl straight home to your cottage. We go for to hear the phone tale of the sweet nightingale as she sings in.